So in the previous video, we walked through a lot of examples, much like this one, the integral of 4x dx. And the way we actually went about taking this antiderivative was we sort of reverse engineered the power rule. Right? So we, we realized that the derivative, for example, of, of x squared equals 2x and use that fact to sort of figure out that the antiderivative of 4x, therefore, must be equal to 2x squared plus c, right? Now, in this video, I'd like to take this a little step further and see if we can come up with a more generalized formula that we can use for all kinds of polynomials to quickly take their antiderivatives, a lot like what we found with the power rule for uh, taking derivatives. So this one is going to be like the power rule for antiderivatives. Right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in order to do this, we need to better understand the power rule. Because if we can know what it's doing on each level, we can sort of reverse engineer that to come up with what we're now going to call the inverse power rule, or the analogous rule to the power rule, which helps us find antiderivatives for, uh, for, for polynomial terms. So for the inverse power rule, we want to look at each step of the regular power rule and see if we can undo it. Right? So for example, we're starting with our derivative. Now the first thing we're doing in the power rule is subtracting one from the exponent. So to counteract that, the inverse power rule, the first step is going to be to add one to the exponent. Right? Likewise, the next thing is we have to multiply by the exponent in the regular power rule. So with the inverse power rule, we're going to divide by the exponent. Right? And if we do this, that'll give us, that should, in theory, give us our f our original function plus c. So let's go through these steps. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and use just some general polynomial x to the a. So if we add 1 to the exponent, what will that give us? That'll give us x to the a plus 1. And then if we divide by the exponent, that'll give us x to the a plus 1 over a plus 1. And then we just tag on a plus c here. Now, in theory, this should be uh, my formula for finding the antiderivative of any polynomial x to the a. But let's just make sure that it works, just to be sure that we're doing the right thing. And to do this, let's put this guy into the regular power rule. I'm going to take this guy and put him into the regular power rule. Because remember, the antiderivative directly undoes the derivative, right? They're both kind of inverses. So if I've done this right, what I get out of this end should be x to the a. So let's do that and just make sure. So if I take the so the, if I go through the power rule, right, the first step is to multiply by the exponent. So what we're going to have, we'll have x to the a plus 1 over a plus 1, right? And we can, we can just ignore the plus c for now. But we're going to have this times a plus 1, right? And as you can see here, this a plus 1 and that a plus 1 are going to cancel. So we're just left with a x to the a plus 1. Then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So we have x to the a plus 1 minus 1, right? So that just gives us x to the a. And that right there will be our final derivative. And that exactly matches what we start with over here. So that tells us that we've done the right, we, our approach is right. And so this guy right here is indeed our formula, so to say, for finding the antiderivative of polynomials, right? It's our inverse power rule, which does exactly what the power rule does, but it finds antiderivatives. So that right there is the formula we've got here. So we take the antiderivative of x to the a, we end up with this nice um, formula here. So let's see if we can apply this with a quick example. So here's our example here. We have the antiderivative of 10x squared minus the square root of x over 1 over x cubed. Now what might be daunting is that these, these two terms at the end here don't really look like polynomials. Right? And they're uh, technically not, maybe a little bit different from the conventional polynomial. But you might remember but that they we can actually rewrite them as follows. We can rewrite this entire thing as... For example, the square root of x becomes x to the 1 half, and 1 over x cubed becomes x to the minus 3 dx. Now that looks like a lot more like something we could apply our formula to, right? So let's go ahead and do this. So for the first term there, we have 10x squared 
So we're going to add 1, divide by what's left. So we have 10x, 2 plus 1 is 3. And then we divide by the 3. Minus x to the 1 half there. Well, that becomes 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. So we have x to the 3 halves. And then dividing by 3 halves gives us, you know, so then we divide by 3 halves. And then over here, we add 1. So this, this becomes x to the minus 2. And we divide by uh, minus 2 as well. Right? And then, of course, we cannot forget our plus c. And that right there would be our antiderivative. We can clean this up a little bit more if we like. So this 10x cubed over 3 stays the same. But instead of dividing by 3 halves, we can multiply by 2 thirds. So that gives us a slightly nicer looking arrangement. And then over here, we can just sort of, um, we can keep x to the minus 2 up there. That's not a problem. You could also bring this into the denominator and make it 1 over 2x squared. But we can also bring this minus sign up here. So that would be x to the minus 2 over 2, right? And we carry forward our plus c. So this looks like a very nice antiderivative here. But really quickly, how could we check that this, in fact, is the correct answer? Well, to check, all we need to do is take our derivative. A very straightforward process of just taking a quick derivative here. So let's go ahead and, and check that answer. So if we do this, we'll end up with, well, if we have this here, well, taking the power rule, we'd have to multiply by 3, so it'll cancel with this 3 in the denominator, uh, leaving us with 10x squared. The 3 halves multiplied by 2 thirds just gives us 1, and then we subtract uh, subtract 1 from 3 halves, so we're just left with uh, x to the 1 half. And then last but not least, when we multiply by minus 2, we make this positive, we make this a plus instead of a minus, and this 2 in the denominator cancels out, so we're left with x to the minus 3. And the c, of course, because the derivative of c is 0, we just end up with, with the c just goes away. So this is what we're left with. And as it turns out, this perfectly matches what we have over here. So we have a correct answer. So that'll be the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. In the next videos, we'll go a little bit more into some more advanced anti-differentiation and, uh, and we'll take a few more integrals there. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time.